close your eyes and watch your breath. Take a couple of good long, deep in and out breaths to gain a sense of where you feel the breath energy in the body. Put aside any preconceived notions you may have about where the breath comes in, where the breath goes out. Notice where you feel the energy flow, because that's what we're focusing on here more than the air coming in and out of the lungs. It's the energy flow that allows the air to come in and out. How is it flowing? Does it feel good? Does it feel at ease? Are there different energy flows that are conflicting with each other, or is everything coordinated? If things are not coordinated, just go through the body section by section. Release whatever tension you may notice in the different parts of the body as you breathe in, breathe out. And then you find that the different parts of the energy flow begin to flow together. That's when you can focus your mind on any one spot and then think of your awareness spreading from that spot to fill the whole body. So you're aware the whole body should breathe in, the whole body should breathe out. And try to maintain that sense of whole body awareness as much as you can. As you begin to see, the flow of the breath is not only in the more obvious parts of the body, but there's a subtle sense of energy flow everywhere in the body. Part of it is coordinated with the in and out breath, and part of it is just there. So think of everything flowing together smoothly. You're creating a state of becoming right here, which, as the Buddha said, involves some stress, but you also need a state of becoming that's going to get you on the path. This is something the mind does all the time. You take on an identity in a particular world, and you stick with it for a while. As long as it's giving you pleasure, you stick with it. Although sometimes you find that what seems to start out as something pleasant turns into something else. This is one of the reasons why we try to create a state of becoming with the breath in a state of concentration, because that doesn't turn into anything else. It doesn't turn on you. A lot of times we create states of becoming in the mind as a kind of escape. The world outside is not pleasant. You feel threatened by it, anxious, and the mind runs for something inside that it can have some control over. Sensual fantasies, more abstract fantasies, whatever the fantasies might be. And it hides out there for a while. It's a kind of escapism. And it finds some pleasure there. But you notice that the worlds you create that way, when you're totally voluntary in creating them. They have nothing but pleasant features. And if you decide you don't like something, then you can change it. If you don't like this, you can change that. And we like to have something that's under our control that way, because you look at the world outside and there's so much that's not under our control. But we tend to lose sight of the fact that these worlds we create inside this way they actually have a karmic force. The mind gets bent in the direction that they go, and you start acting on them one way or another, or even just going to something again and again and again in the mind creates a kind of frequency that will tune you into another level of being, and you find that your life begins to go in that direction. And that's when you begin to realize that the parts of the fantasy that you didn't like are not so amenable to your control anymore. I mean, this is the state of becoming we're living in right now, outside, is a result of little becomings we created in our minds in the past. That's when you begin to see that they turn on you. There's a karmic consequence. As long as we're just enjoying the becoming or the fantasies inside, we tend to turn a blind eye to that. In India they had a theory about this. 
they notice that you can depict some pretty horrible things on the stage, and people enjoy watching them. You can write novels where horrible things are happening, rape, incest, infidelity, and you can enjoy reading them. You enjoy writing them, you enjoy reading them. And if you had to actually live through those things, you'd be miserable. This is what we have to watch out for with our sensual fantasies, that they lead the mind in a certain direction. They have a karmic imprint, you might say. And at some point, we'll they influence what we actually experience in the world outside, in these larger states of becoming. And then we'll begin to realize that they're not as pleasant as we thought. This is one of the reasons why I have to counteract them with another state of becoming, the state of concentration. Because this doesn't turn on you. The karma consequences are good. At the same time, this kind of becoming, unlike the fantasies that we indulge in, allows you to see what's going on in the mind clearly. You can see how the mind reacts around pain. You can see how it reacts around pleasure. It gives you a place where you can step back and understand these things, as with pain. We tend to run away from it. But the Buddha says if you're going to get past it, you can't run away from it. You have to turn around and comprehend it. And where are you going to get the strength to sit with pain for long periods of time or endure long chronic illnesses, unless you have a state of concentration where the mind has a safe place to go, a solid place where it can stand, where it's outside of the pain and can look into it and understand it. So that's the advantage of this kind of becoming that we create in the mind as we, as we meditate. You find the parts of the body that you can make comfortable. There may be some parts that you can't. But you don't focus on the parts that you can't make comfortable. You focus on the areas that you can. And John Mahabhu has a comment. He says, usually when pain and comes into the body, it's not just in one spot. It seems to inflict the whole body and inflict the whole mind. But it doesn't have to. If you start looking at the actual nature of the different sensations in the body, you begin to realize that there's not pain everywhere. And John Lee's comment was that if there was pain everywhere, he'd die. So there's got to be some part of the body that's at least pleasant. And if you focus there, think of the breath energy coming in and out right there it's to maximize that sense of pleasure and allowing it to just stay there and not be affected by the running around of the mind or the running around of energies in the body that's an area that's protected, then you've got a safe place to stay. And then from there you can send thoughts of having that breath energy go through the pain. You find areas where the flow is blocked. If there's pain in the head, there may be a blockage in your neck, or maybe a blockage in the base of the spine. John Fuhn talked about how he had chronic headaches, and his way of dealing with it was to think of the energy going down the spine out through the tailbone, opening up that particular energy channel. And because you've got that state of concentration, you can let that perception hang there for a while and see what impact it has on the way you actually experience the body, the way you actually experience the pain. And because you've got that state of concentration, you can be with the pain and yet not be overwhelmed by it. It allows you actually to probe into the pain to see what are the perceptions you have around the pain that actually aggravate it, make it worse, and in particular make it worse in the sense of creating a pain in the mind. If you perceive it as a solid block or you see it as something that has ill will towards you, question those perceptions. If you see it as coming at you, question that perception too. Think of those individual moments of pain going away, going away, going away. Whatever perception you find helps. They give you a sense that your awareness is one thing and the pain is something else, and the body is something else. 
And you can do this all based on that state of concentration. So even though the concentration is constructed, it's a good co construct. It's a state of becoming, but it's a useful state of becoming. It can be part of the path. So try to nurture it well, instead of escaping into fantasies, you escape into this. But here's an area where you're not really escaping things, you're putting yourself in a position where you can face things more clearly. There's a passage in the commentary that describes three levels of concentration, momentary, access, and fixed penetration. And because it's in the commentary, there are lots of different ways that it can be interpreted. The one that John I heard in Thailand gave a good interpretation. The momentary concentration is when you're focused on something, but then it gets unpleasant, either boring or actually painful, and you go away, you leave it, you drop it. Access concentration is when you can sit with something and actually face down the pain, or the boredom, or whatever, and find a sense of ease and well-being in the midst of that. But then it loses its focus when the pleasure gets intense. Fixed penetration is what can be with both pleasure and pain, not get knocked off base by them. So that's what you're headed for, a state of concentration where pleasure and pain are just there, but they don't overwhelm the mind. And we're in your position, you can begin to understand these things. So even though it's a fabrication, the state of concentration, work at doing it well. It's not escapist, but it does provide an escape from the misery that we create for ourselves. So it's something worth trying to master.